There's a quote that says, never memorize something that you can look up. Albert Einstein. Hey, welcome and welcome back. My name is Ronald and this is my software journal. And today we're gonna to be discussing Google, a tool used by software engineers, developers, and programmers. If you're new to my channel, I talk about coding, entrepreneurship, and my life in general as a software engineer. If this is something you might be interested in, hey, subscribe to the fam. Without further ado, let's get into it. Google is pretty good at finding solutions to your problems. Sometimes. It depends on how you use it. Also, with coding books becoming outdated after several months of being published, Google is a great resource to find the most updated information on the technology tools that you're building with. It even helps with not reinventing the wheel because more than likely, someone already did it before. Here are three ways software engineers, developers, programmers, Use Google. Number one, to find solutions to your errors and why did it occur. When you first start coding, you're bound to run into some errors. And that's a fact, Jack. More than likely, if you ever search why your particular code is failing or throwing an error, you'll probably run into this site called Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is a tool itself. And I'll probably be discussing that in a, another video. Just like Stack Overflow, you'll fall into a community or group who had or having the same issue as you. That's probably one of the best things about the internet. You'll more likely find a community or a group of individuals who are interested in the same thing as you. In this case, the same problem as you. Once you find something of a solution, you want to understand why that is the fix to your issue. There's two reasons why you want to do this. One, you don't want to blindly take someone else's word, which could just be a temporary fix. And you might have to come back and fix it again. Two, you don't want to copy and paste and completely ruin your system or application. It's almost pretty much self-exploratory right there. All right, so let's get into the second reason why software engineers use Google. The second reason is to find documentation on code libraries, APIs, and frameworks, etc. You're not going to remember every single method of a class or interface. It's probably one of the reasons why they have code completion. To this day, I still have to look up classes, methods, and properties of a particular coding library or framework because one, I could be going to a new team and working on a new project, or two, I can be going to an old project and revisiting some code. One of the things that I definitely do now with my code, I write a lot of documentation of what this class does, what this method does, and etc. So I don't have to go back into the documentation somewhere else to find the information because in the old code, it's there. You might get to the point where you continuously use a coding library or framework continuously over and over again till you get to the point where you know what classes need to be instantiated what methods need to be called, and you pretty much know the basis of that framework or coding library. There will definitely be times when your whole entire tech stack will be completely switched up and you will have to learn a new programming language in order to work on this new project or feature. Typically, online code libraries are the latest and greatest versions of the code documentation. This is the reason why I stopped buying Pacific coding programming language books because they become outdated given that the code functionality completely becomes deprecated or obsolete. This is why Pacific coding books are useless in regards to documentation. The one thing you have to remember is you don't have to remember. Plain and simple. You just need to know where to search for the information. All right, so number three, the reason why software engineers use Google is to find repositories of already built code. The thing to remember is, for the most part, a lot of things have been already thought about and a lot of things have already been built. In regards to a lot of things, you really don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are hundreds and even thousands of people who came before you, pretty much laid down the tracks, and that's why we have a lot of libraries, frameworks, and so on to make our jobs much easier. Because the coding community is really big on sharing knowledge and ideas, there are thousands and even millions of repositories online of already built code. Some of the biggest public repos are GitHub and Bitbucket. GitHub is probably more widely used. For example, let's find a tic-tac-toe game in Java. There it is. Let's find a snake game in JavaScript. There it is. My point is you never really have to build something from scratch. 
And if you are, you, you pretty much have an original idea that no one has ever really thought about. And that's great for you. But it's just going to be a lot of work. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. You know, I got a lot of great stuff coming up this year. Um, this past week, I've just been taking a break. And now I'm just about to get back into it. So, you know, if you want to stay updated on any awesome videos that I put out, make sure you subscribe to the fam. And then until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.